Welcome students. In the previous lectures, we have seen the intuition and the pictorial representation of how DFS is working using stacks. In this lecture, we will see the algorithm and code which implements our DFS logic. So let's begin. Now as you can see the code is quite simple so you can easily translate into programming language of your choice. But anyhow let's begin and see how and we'll trace the whole algorithm on the same graph which we have taken in the previous lectures. So let's begin. So now this DFS is the main function which will implement our logic. Now it is accepting an argument. Now this argument is nothing but a vertex of the graph. And here we have an array called visited and what it does the position in this array denoted by this vertex tells us whether this vertex has been visited or not. If it is true then it means it is visited. If it is false it means it has not been visited. So that's pretty much it. So let's start tracing out this algorithm. So suppose we'll start our algorithm at this point A. Correct. Here we'll start this our DFS basically DFS algorithm. So here we'll have first of all we'll have A. Now as soon as we have A here it will go into this function and it will be marked as true. It means now A is visited. So let me mark here A as true. Now what is happening here? If you could see for each u adjacent to v, it means here you are all the neighbors of v, correct? All, all the vertex of the v which are adjacent to it for all those vertices. So here what are those vertices? What are the vertices adjacent to a, b and c, correct? So for all these vertices, what will happen? This logic will run. So if a vertex, now a vertex which is a neighbor of a, if it is not visited, you will again call DFS onto that vertex. So here we had, so here u is nothing but, if you could see what is u, here u is b and c. Now let's take b first, so v is visited, it has b is visited, no. So what you do, you call DFS on b. Now again, what will happen? It will, it is a recursive call. Here b will come and now we are, we have moved to this point. Now let's trace b. So here now we are at b. We could have also chosen c. In that case we could have, we would have gone different DFS result. As I told in the previous lecture, you, there may not be a unique DFS for a particular graph even when the input node is a input node is C. Now what will happen here it is B. Now let me trace this function. So what will happen here? For all u adjacent to B, V, V is nothing but B. So what are the nodes which are adjacent to B here? A, D and F. Now if visited, so we will definitely will uh, will keep aside A because A is, has already been visited. So basically what are the nodes which are left? Basically D and F. So for D and F, here there would have been definitely A comma F comma D. But again since A is already visited, so we will not be going to use it. Now let's suppose, let's take F. So now has, an, has F been visited? Definitely and here definitely we will put root in B because we, B is now B is now visited. Now F has F been visited? No. So what you will do? You will run again DFS on F. Correct? Now I will be moving more quicker. So here now which node will be accepted? F. And here now let's start moving, let's move, let's move on to F. Now F, we have come here to F. Again the same logic, this time I will not be writing each and every trace of it. You can easily write it on your copy. Now what are the neighbors of F? Definitely B and G. 
but B is already visited, so we will neglect it. It will come to G. So here G will come. So and definitely what we will do? Uh, F is there, so we will mark F as 2. It means F is not visited. So what, what are the neighbors of F? B and G. B is already visited. We will come to G. So here what we will pass? We will pass or G will get passed. Correct? So now we have G here and we have moved to this position. Correct? Again the same logic G, G will be marked your true and neighbors of G will be checked. F is already visited, F is already visited, H is not visit, visited. So you will again pass H onto GFS recursively. Again we have gone H, H is here, we have moved to H, now again now H will be marked as visited, true and neighbors of H will be checked. So it will be G, definitely we will neglect it, I and J, both I and J are not visited. So we can choose any one of them, suppose we have chosen I, so now I will be passed, I will come here and I will be marked as visited. Now what? Again, what are the neighbors of I? Only one neighbor H and it has already been visited. So here nothing we can do. We will go back. That is, we have, we had come here. Nothing to do. Basically it's a dead end. We will go back. H. Now from H we had two options, right? I and J. We had passed I but this time now we will pass J. So, we will pass here J. J will come here. Now what? We have reached here. We have passed J. J will be termed as uh, I think I have not made entry for A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and let me make entry for J also here. So J is now true. Now what will happen? Now you will start backtracking, correct? From H, H to G, G to F, F to B. And now what will happen? Here when we had B, you remember we had passed F. Now it's turn off D because B had at that time two neighbors, three neighbors in fact, A, F and D. A was already visited. We chose to go through F, go to F. Now D is remaining. So here D will be now, we will pass D onto this DFS function. So D will get passed. D comes here. D is now marked true and we are into this D. So what are the neighbors of D? Definitely B and E. The same logic will go. I will be moving a bit fast. So same logic will go. Here you will pass E. You go to E and now and E is marked true. Any other neighbor of E? Any other neighbor of E which has not been visited? No, because it has only one neighbor D had already been visited. You will backtrack. You will come to D, come to B, come to A. Now, as you remember, we had two neighbors of A, B and C. But we chose to go through B. Now, D, C is a neighbor of A which has not been visited. So, we will pass C. And we will pass C here, C is passed here and now C is true, correct? So C will come here, any neighbor of C which has not been visited, there is only one neighbor, it has already been visited, nothing to do, correct? So we have gone to C also and completed our whole logic. Now as you can see, this complete array now stands visited. And this indicates termination of our algorithm. Correct? Now, suppose if you want to print out all these steps, what you will do or any other logic based upon this DFS travel, travel sir, what you will do? You will put that logic basically here. So, suppose if I wanted to print this path, what this path would have been A, B, F, G, H, I, J, D, E, A, C, pretty much this one, right? So what I would have done, what I should have done, 
here I should have what done I should have printed that this vertex correct I should have printed this vertex V or data associated with E with V so this is pretty much it so now you can see now if you if you if, if you know that this fact that function call this is see this is a recursive function recursive function is implemented in any computer logic or computer language using recursion how you will study that in computer organization or computer architecture this is how recursion is implemented is be using stacks is beyond the scope of this lecture but yes recursion recursive function uses stack and how we implemented this DFS using stack you saw in the previous lecture so this is pretty much it in the next lecture we will try to do some problems thank you now we could have chosen C also as I said we would have got different DFS as I told you in the very first lecture that there might be there might be cut now we could have also chosen C but as I told you in the very uh, first lecture there could be multiple uh, variations of a DFS on a given graph with 